Hi guys and welcome to my first tutorial. This is a tutorial I made on a request by Flo on a, on a Romanian modeling site regarding the uh, badger masking film and the way I'm uh, using it. So uh, I have to explain a little bit the process of this the badger film. I'm going to uh, show it to you uh, in more detail just in a few seconds. I use this in conjunction with my portrait uh, silhouette cutter. It's just a plotter. So the simplest one, the cheapest one, I just buy it from Amazon. I can't remember exactly how much I paid, but I think it was around $70 marks. I bought it like two years and a half ago. For other purposes, but eventually uh, by uh, trial and error, I reached to my uh, method of doing uh, custom marks. Now the second uh, thing I want to introduce to you is this uh, budget film. My uh, problem here, as I explained to uh, Flo, is that the film is very thin and transparent and perhaps you're not going to see too much of what I'm doing. That's why I'm going to explain to you. So, the budget film, the, uh, this is the, the glossy version, there is a matte version as well. It comes in a wax paper and is, uh, is a very thin plastic film, self-adhesive plastic film. In my case now, is is stick to, to the silhouette feeder tray for use. As you can perhaps you figure out, but you're going to see uh, later on in the video, it's quite economical. So I have here a marking for an American aircraft I was doing. I have leftovers from uh, printing a motorcycle uh, helmet. <laughs> the name of the owner is Dean, good friend of mine. Here I have the uh, 13 that I just used on my RS uh, models Henkel. And here is the uh, the one we're going to use today. But before then, I'm going to explain what you're doing because you're not going to be able to see much. So when, when I'm doing my uh, my masking, my custom masking, right? What I'm using to do is to use the positive mask instead of the uh, negative. Right. So I cut. I design my graphics. In 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 this case is uh, Flo's name because he was the one to request the tutorial. And also, I cut a square or a round, depends on, on, on uh, what the general shape of the graphic is. Why I'm doing that? For two reasons. Either I can use the negative mask, so I just uh, remove the, the lead, but then I'm going to have uh, uh, difficulties on centering the, uh, the O cutout, right? My method is to remove completely this side from the side and the cut the, the cut out right so i'm going to have only the actual graphic left then i'm going to use some transfer tape like tamiya tape now the adhesive of the transfer uh, tape is stronger than the adhesive on the back of the uh, budget film so i'm going to lift the graphic together like this they're not going to change position right they, they, they're going to keep alignment and i'm going to apply it together on the object I want to apply the mask. I hope uh, this I made it uh, clear. Okay, you're going to see on the following moments what I'm talking about. So for this little experiment, I'm going to use the colors that I uh, brewed myself for the Russian tank I'm working on. It's a T-51, uh, sorry, a T-54-1 model 1947. So we have here the main camo colors, the Russian green, the dark yellow and the uh, dark brown that to use so I sprayed for myself for a comparison with the uh, graphics suggested on the instruction manual I sprayed this uh, spoon so this I'm going to use it as our test so I'm going to apply the uh, custom mask on, on this spoon and then I'm going to spray it with green and, and, and brown but because I love to make myself my life difficult, I'm going to use some uh, silly potty as well, just to, uh, as I say, just to make the things even more complicated. Now I want to uh, take the opportunity, since I'm doing this tutorial, to uh, show you also the difference between hard edges and uh, soft edges. Masking, of course, you can use a combination of two depends on, on, on graphing, you graphics you want to uh, achieve. On, on this case, when you use the budget film, of course, uh, you're going to have a hard edge camo. So I'm just, you know, doing something to add more to the graphics. 
Now we're going to proceed and do what I was explaining to you just before. I'm going to use this cotton swab as a uh, burnisher. Oh, I have to say that I choose wrongly the, the font. This cluster black font has some sharp edges that the, uh, the cutter, the, the, the plotter doesn't pick it too well. But it is going to be okay for our demonstration only. So, as I say, I'm going to remove the negative masking. masking. Of course, you can use this if you want. If you, I, I did so I, when I when I uh, I have the same graphic uh, on let's say both sides of a, of a model, you can use the positive and the negative at the same time. Each one for the, for the side if you want to save more film. Let's hope you can see that. If not, <laughs> you have to take my word for it. So now in the in, in the center of my square, I have left only. My camera is not going to focus on that, that I was afraid of. I have only the, my, uh, my cutout graphics. So, I'm going to... Uh, sorry, I'm turning the, uh, the film for me to see better. I'm going to use, to reuse this Tamiya bit of tape. I'm going to try to align the edges so my uh, graphic is going to be on a straight position and now when, when I'm removing the film normally it should come with the uh, lettering attached to the back I'm giving a little help here yes okay so now on the transfer tape again not sure you can see that we have the small graphic which is designed for flow Let's take our uh, dark yellow spoon. Try to center it by the eye, of course, and stick it down. Now, starting from the center of the letter, I'm going to make them conform against the surface of the object. That's why the, uh, using the positive mask, he, I find it more uh, handy and uh, more precise than uh, the negative mask because the negative mask is going to leave you those small pockets where the uh, paint can infiltrate and give you some headaches. I think I, uh, I went too hard on, on uh, my paint, but that's okay. I have a little chip there. Now I don't see air at all under my uh, leathers anymore, under my graphic. And now we're going to remove the transfer tape. Be careful not to peel off the leathers. Sometimes it happens. But most of the time it doesn't. Alright. And let pass the... One more time, the burnisher, our arrow straw on top of the letter, so make sure the edges are and done. Now let's throw more graphic elements in, into this our uh, little design. Usually I don't go that complicated, usually I do uh, very simple things. It's not important what I'm doing now, and it's not related to what I'm doing. <laughs> I just want to to go a little bit farther than I'm supposed to go. As I was saying, I'm going to attach at the end of the video. A gallery with 
examples where I was uh, used using this method for you to uh, make an idea, a better idea what you can get out from the badger film. Of course you don't need a, a cutter or a cutter, as I said I bought it for another purpose but it didn't serve me well for that so eventually I end up using it with the badger film which I was cutting manually. My first German crosses, custom German crosses on captured vehicles, I made them by uh, by cutting just with uh, scissors or with a uh, hobby knife. So I'm going to, as I said, I'm going to spray green and brown freehanded on uh, on top of my masking to see what we uh, to see what we get, and then I'm going to remove, of course, the masking and. We're going to see together the result. Now I'm going to take a break and I'm going to do this on camera. It's going to be fast and I, I'm uh, coming back to remove the masking and uh, do the final comments on my method and on my result. I'll be back in a second. Okay guys, back from the painting room. I sprayed just uh, very thin, heavily thin. Uh, paint just uh, to allow to dry fast it dried only for how long I uh, clean my airbrush and my working space so perhaps less than five minutes let's try to undo this masking without damage to the paint first I'm going to take this party away Ah, my paint chip went even bigger. I hope you don't mind that. The reason why I'm using these plastic spoons to test my paint, not because they are very cheap and uh, handy to use, but also the plastic is so shiny, if your paint sticks to it, it's going to stick to everything, you don't have to worry if it's going to stick on the model or not, because it will, I can guarantee you. I did some more sloppy job on painting here, but I'm, um, I'm glad I did this test for me so I can see how the three colors, the, the camo uh, colors from my Russian tank will uh, fit together. I was I was a little bit afraid that, that the contrast between yellow and green did not so be, but is the way that many artists suggesting in the, in the instructions. Uh, now I have the uh, visual proof that everything should be okay on the completed model. And now let's try to remove those custom marks you put here This concludes my uh, little demonstration. I hope Claude is answering your uh, curiosity. As you can see, the Badger film didn't lift the paint at all, and it's all fresh. The spoon was primed and painted with uh, yellow the night before, uh, so it's less than 24 hours old. And the uh, green and brown was sprayed just now, five minutes ago and is uh, still tacky, so by no means is uh, dry, let alone cured. Thank you for, very much for your attention, and following, you can see a small gallery with uh, models 
on which I uh, applied this um, method, either by hand, either using my uh, silhouette uh, portrait cutter. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, attention. I'll see you next time.